Hi guys, hope everyone's okay. Uh, I'm Minas and welcome back to another episode on Can You Dig It? Um, before I get started guys, look at these, look at my sunflowers. Um, not as big as I'd liked, um, I took a while before I repotted them, um, but uh, beautiful, very nice. We'll have a little look at these a little later in the video and if anything, if you want to know how I got these like this, then um, I'll try and link those videos to the bottom as well. But anyway, on to today's video. Thought we might as well have a quick look before the before we get into today's one. Um, dwarf sunflowers. Got a couple there opening up. That's a good one. There's going to be I think, a couple of two, three heads on that one. More across there, and and you can see they're starting to another couple of days, and they should be open up as well. They should have been about two to three meters, but like I said, guys, at the start I was a little bit late in transplanting them from. Well, from when this sprouted from the seeds, I was a good month late. Um, had I have done that, these would have been double, triple the size in height, as well as the thickness of the stems. But hey, never mind. Anyway, let's crack on. Guys, for today's video, uh, we're going to have a look at this. We're going to have a bit of an in-depth review on how, to, how I made it, what it's used for. It's a circular saw crosscut jig. Uh, guys, I took this idea from a channel that uh, I watch regularly, it's uh, DIY Creators, a gentleman called Glenn from the States, and um, he's got a full uh, plan, if you want to call it, on, on his channel. Uh, but the dimension itself doesn't really matter, you want to try and make it as big and wide for your intended use, uh, but I guess the fundamental idea is the same. Guys, what we'll have to do is, uh, well, just have a quick look at it, let's see what we've got. So like I said, it's circular saw crosscut jig. Idea being, it's not plugged in. You get your circular saw, you put it in. And you can just run repeat straight cuts. Now, let's have a look at how big I've made it. It's... I know how big it is, it's 32. Yep, 32 inches in length, and it's 18, I believe. Yep, 18 inches wide. Uh, the base itself is made from one inch thick plywood, uh, and the, well, what I'm gonna call it, the support, the height here is made from two by two. It's not actually two by two, it's slightly under, uh, it always is. And I've used 15 mil MDF for the track itself, and um, I believe that is 12 mil wide by maybe five or six for the tops there. But again, I'll get into why I've used that. Um, I did want to use the same plywood, which is here, for the base itself. Uh, so it would have been slightly higher. But guys, what happened was it made the depth. I couldn't. I didn't have. It, it wasn't. It wasn't touching the wood. I could. I could pass a piece of paper underneath it, and we didn't want that. So I had to change my design there. Um, I should make a few design tweaks actually uh, from watching Glenn's video um, and that's nothing to do with the video itself it's purely because uh, he used it with his circular saw which is a rigid one brand rigid uh, whereas mine is uh, Bosch and the different design uh, the switches the levers and the knobs are in different locations and unfortunately for me uh, I came to quite a few hurdles doing that um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and uh, we'll have a bit of a proper look Okay, so um, guys, the first thing we'll look at is how I've put it all together. So on the underneath, you'll know there's, notice there's no visible screws attaching uh, this beam to, to the plywood. And that's because, I'll flip it over actually, I've countersunk them. The uh, reason I've countersunk them is I don't want the heads uh, raised out a little. Uh, it'll just make it, it wouldn't make it uh, flat at the bottom to ride along and whatever you're putting it on, it will most likely scratch. Um, I've also countersunk uh, the screws on the track itself. Again, it's the same, well, similar reason. You don't want the heads exposed, raised, because uh, as you're running uh, the base plate of your circular saw across this, you don't want it to snag on that. So there, you want them perfectly flush or slightly indented, and that's fine. Mine are slightly indented in some areas. And what else? Okay, guys, so. You'll notice, um, like I said at the start, I did want to use the same plywood for the base as for this, um, for this bit here, but a couple of things happened there. 
So that's the wood itself. That's what I would have used and it would have been cut to length like that. Maybe what an inch high and uh, a saw plate base would have sat across there, but I had a little issue with mine. And again, nothing to do with the video, nothing to do with the saw itself. But as you can see there, my height adjustment lever if you can see there sticks out a little it's just there that's the lever and it just sticks out from the base plate and if I used inch thick plywood that was well it didn't matter what height it was it would have caught onto that so I had to redesign it a little had to use different height wood there so when it sits in I'll show you now I'm right handed, I was using my left hand. So you'll notice when it sits in there, move the wire out of the way, there's not the right amount of clearances I'd like, and that's just purely based on the, des the design of this saw. And something else happened in regards to that, and again, I'll mention that in a second. Uh, actually, I might as well mention it now. So again, one of the reasons I had to change the design and use uh, this type of wood is, originally I had it set to, um, depth height of this plus the 15 mil and you know you wanted it to just touch uh, the base plate or the base of it so when you did uh, your first pass it would just barely score that but it would cut into this in this gap uh, but what I found was I had it all set up it was I was really happy with how it was built I was ready to go and as I made well let me tilt it a little as I attempted to make the score line um the release lever for the height adjustment gripped onto this wood and it caught on in it and it's and it slid it over and it dropped a little a uh, bit of a panic moment not gonna lie and it and that's why it's gone a little bit too deeper into the the base plate as i wanted to i wanted it to barely just go underneath this one but it's gone a good six or seven millimeters into that but again that was purely because of the design of the lever there and it slipped and it fell in, but that's okay. Um, let's have a look at, well, why did I make it in the first place? I do a lot of cross cuts and let's put that down a second. So let's just say we want to, we want to cross cut this. Um, it's a, it's a scrap board. I, I wish it wasn't. It's quite nice. It's got a bit of a bow in it. But anyway, what I was doing before was, for argument's sake, we'll not measure it. We'll just draw a line. We'll draw a line across. Let's say I wanted to cut it, so either keep this or keep that. I was getting a speed square and I was attaching it using a clamp just a spring clamp so I was measuring measuring the, um, the width from the saw blade to the base plate I was clamping this down to this and then I was getting the circular saw and I was using this straight edge as a makeshift fence to run it through there obviously it being clamped and everything and I thought it is taking a bit too long and like I said at the start I came across uh, uh, Glenn's video on his channel and I thought yeah I, I could do with something like that so no need for this anymore so what we'll do now guys is we'll just set it up so again um, you'd want it clamped down uh, you want it uh, clamped down to a nice secure base and we'll do that okay And we'll just use that same straight line that we did there and we'll we'll just demonstrate on, on on how this works and how brilliant it is so again what i did was once it was built um obviously i had that little issue with the soil blade dropping but hopefully yours doesn't and you want to make a nice score line all the way through and you could you could see all the way through it okay guys so what you do is you basically you've got your line and you just line it up underneath so you can see through, you line up your pencil line 
with the cut that was made on the first pass that scored into this that cut into this that made that reference line um and you you want to spend that extra maybe hour even making sure it's dead on square because if it's a tiny little bit off then it's pointless making this you could make uh, a straighter cut by a handsaw or a jigsaw so guys you want to spend that extra extra bit of time making sure that this is square to the base this is square to the base uh, and you want to make sure that there's no wiggle when you put um, your saw on itself you want that to be nice you want these to be nice and parallel so it does take a lot of time setting up definitely worth it though so yeah let's just have a look so we've got it plugged in safety essentials guys you want some some gloves and some glasses I'm only going to make one or two cuts or ideally if you're working indoors you'd want a dust mask as well um, another thing I could do actually I might as well show you so let's say you were making um, you know repeat cuts the same length what you could do is um, you can well you make a stop block ideally this is just for demonstration purposes I'd like to have something a bit more permanent I could slide that across and measure it and what have you but you would measure from the cut line to here at your desired length if you're making repeat cuts and you could just use a scrap piece of wood like I have clamp that in and let's move it across a little so you can see there you go so uh, the idea being you'd move your wood across and this acts as a natural stop block and you can make the repeat cuts constantly at the same height without having to measure like I did. So uh, that's something I'll probably add, um, a sliding stop lock. Okay, so we'll just take this off. I'll draw a pencil line. And guys, this is how easy it is. You line up your pencil line with the pre-cut groove in the jig. Slide the saw in. Ah, actually, before I make that cut, let me just unplug it. On Glenn's video, he mentioned one thing that he didn't, well, I'm not sure if he didn't think about at the time, but he didn't do, but advised others like myself, which I did. The gap here on the base plate is, it's deliberate. The idea is when I put the saw in, the width of the groove, it catches the blade guard. And you'll be able to see, if I drop that in, See how this slid over. So keep an eye on this again. As I've put it in, the width of uh, the gap has caught the blade guard. Brilliant. And there you go. If that gap was a little bit wider, it wouldn't have caught the blade guard and you would have had to have done, well, this is what you have to do. This is what Glenn had to do. You slide it across manually and you've had to have clamp it like that. But I didn't want to do that. I thought I've got the time to do it. I'm going to make it properly. So guys, again, that's something you want to keep an eye out for yourself. Um, another thing which will probably vary from design to design. And you wanna, you're going to want to do this, pardon the pun, but a million times. You want to measure from the blade to this edge, from, from the blade to that edge. You want to double, triple check that. You want to make sure the base plate width is the same two or three times down. Make sure it's perfect. And that's what we'll have a look. If we pop it in there's n absolutely no play in it at all so you know it's it's going perfectly straight there's no wiggle no room for it to move around we can just move that out of the way and there you go and another good thing actually which worked out all right for me um i didn't need to apply no wax uh, to the track itself to help it glide if I did use the plywood, I would have had to, but with MDF, it's got a natural bit of sheen to it and it moves freely through it. Uh, but guys, enough rabbiting on. Let's just see how it works. So, like I said was, it's not plugged in. Pencil line, line it up with a pre-cut groove. Make sure your hands are well out of the way and gloves, glasses, and like I said, dust mask. If you're doing, if you're gonna be using it a lot, plug it in. So that's loaded it nicely. And 
just to show you guys how good one of these is, actually is. No light passing through there at all. Absolutely perfect. And guys, the reason that's absolutely perfect is I spent those those extra, you know, couple of hours making sure everything was square and everything was perfect. And now I can just do constant repeat repeat cross cuts with this brilliant cross cut jig. And guys, I believe that's pretty much everything about it. Uh, I've mentioned that it's been countersunk, uh, countersunk screws to help it glide and for rubbing underneath. The size of it itself, whatever you want. Um, keep an eye on the tool you're building it around. Look out for levers, switches, things that might get in the way. And guys, I think um, I think we'll wrap it up there for for, the, for today's video on this DIY crosscut jig. And um, just to wrap you up, guys, remember uh, count with sinky screws. Make sure you've measured two or three times for the base plate and things like that. Make sure you study the tool like you're building it around. Look out for the levers and switches, like I've mentioned. Uh, but guys. This is my DIY circular saw crosscut jig. Again, like I said, taken from uh, DIY Creators channel, Glenn. Thank you very much for that. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, then uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a like, comment down below. Have I done everything different? Is there anything you do different? Have you got any questions about it? Uh, but I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, I'm Minas, this is Beat Can You Dig It? Thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.